Yield the gentlelady another 30 seconds. The gentlelady is yielded Remem an additional 30 seconds. Thank you. And remain silent in the face of people questioning my loyalty to our country. I believe that I speak clearly for all fellow Jewish, fellow Jewish veterans that this echoes of language that has been used to marginalize and persecute the Jewish people for centuries. The recent accusations of dual loyalty call into question the equal footing of Jewish members in elected office and, by extension, all Jews living in America. I'm proud to vote on this resolution in condemnation of this rhetoric. I yield my time. The gentlelady yields back. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I would uh, remind, I don't think my friend from New York would question my belief that what happened at Charlottesville or anywhere else was bad. I don't think he really meant that, Mr. Speaker, because I do believe it is bad. And I think this what is bad is having to write this bit thing seven days and having to figure this out. With that, I yield three minutes to the gentleman from New York, Mr. Zeldin. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let's all be honest with each other. Uh, we are here today right now because of anti-Semitic rhetoric from one member of this chamber said again and again and again. We would not be on this floor right now otherwise to discuss this topic. If that member was a Republican, that member's name would be in this resolution. And this resolution would be all about condemning anti-Semitism and it would be done so forcefully. That member in January had to apologize for talking about a hypnosis of Israel that they have over the entire world. That member had to apologize in February by saying that if you support Israel, it must be because you're bought off by Jews. That member called it an unequivocal apology, even though she filled it with equivocation. And now we're back again, this time by saying that if you support the U.S.-Israel relationship, that you must have pledged allegiance to a foreign government. Except this time that member is refusing to apologize. Even if you gave that member every benefit of the doubt that she had no idea what she was doing, why now wouldn't she be apologizing? Why would she be more emboldened to refuse an apology altogether? I apparently uh, am giving Rep. Omar more credit than uh, the Speaker is because I don't believe she is naive. I believe that she knows exactly what she's doing. It is an American value, by the way, to have reasonable, legitimate criticism of a government, whether it be the U.S. government, Israel, or any other government. It is not an American value, though, to be hurling anti-Semitic rhetoric. Anti-Semitism must be condemned unequivocally and emphatically. We have members of this chamber who associate with Louis Farrakhan who says, quote, Hitler was a very great man. Let's talk about a double standard. In January, we all came to this chamber. We condemned white supremacy. We named a Republican member. We kicked that member off of his committees. He can't serve on the Small Business Committee, but this member will continue to serve on the House Foreign Affairs Committee. But no, now we can't come here and just emphatically, solely, forcefully condemn anti-Semitism and name names, but if it was a Republican, we would. It's time to call out these statements for what they are. Pointed, bigoted, unreasonable, illegitimate, anti-Semitic. I commend my colleagues on the other side of the aisle who have been speaking out about all this anti-Semitism. A few members come to mind. Chairman Engel, Congressman Deutsch, Congressman Nadler, Congresswoman Lowy, Congressman Gottheimer. Many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, I believe to their core, know how very wrong this is, and there are many other members to name as well. And I'd be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of them, because support of Israel, support of Jews, standing against anti-Semitism, has been bipartisan in the past. It should be bipartisan today, and should be bipartisan for every moment in the future. I yield back. And from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As a Jewish member of Congress who lost family in the Holocaust and whose grandfather fought the Nazis, I need no reminder about our responsibility to confront bigotry, hatred, and intolerance wherever it is found. No matter how hard one tries, the allegation of dual loyalty simply does not constitute a legitimate opinion about foreign policy. It's a slur against Jews, it's indefensible, and it's deserving of the condemnation by everyone, every time. More than anything, it's offensive to question my loyalty or anyone's loyalty to the United States of America here, simply because I'm Jewish. The same way it was appalling to question President John Kennedy's loyalty to the United States because he was Catholic. I'm glad that Congress is voicing its opposition to anti-Semitism and made it clear that dual loyalty smear is unacceptable. Unfortunately, it was also clear from the discussions this week and the ultimate resolution that treating anti-Semitism anti is being treated differently General than other Thomas forms of expired. bigotry and hatred. There shouldn't be an asterisk next to anti-Semitism, and I'll continue to fight Thomas it. Time has Thank you. 
How much time do I have, Mr. Collins? Have? The gentleman from New York has four and one quarter minutes. How do I have? The gentleman from Georgia has four minutes remaining. I reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from New York, Mr. Nadler. Mr. Speaker, I now yield. 